Welcome back everyone to the Bourbon Judge. I can't believe it's countdown. It's Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas everyone. Hope you guys are enjoying the, uh, the Christmas and or whatever you celebrate, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, or nothing at all. Whatever you celebrate, happy that, merry that. <laughs> um, but real quick guys, just wanna say, uh, you know, today we're gonna go ahead and get into, uh, uh, this is Pinhook Bourbon. So got some great feedback from the viewers saying, hey Bourbon Judge, can you review a bourbon that's a little bit easier to find and a little bit more, you know, price at a normal price point, right? Some of the Weller and so forth products, that the Buffalo Chase products sometimes can be very expensive and hard to find. So let's try to review something that's a little bit easier to find. So I travel quite often for work, different states all over, and I've seen Pinhook all over. So uh, hopefully this is easy for you guys to find. So let's kind of get into this one. So Pinhook, most of their bourbons and rye, you can buy them anywhere from 40 to $50. That's about average, right? Um, that's the normal price. And again, typically pretty easy to find. Um, so Pinhook Bourbon, they started out, so first and foremost, I'll say a couple of things. They make uh, a bourbon, a rye, a single barrel. Um, this one here is the cast strength, which is the one we're gonna review today. So cast strength. Um, and they actually, think even this year, they released a rye cast strength, which I haven't tried that one yet. So that's on my hit list to try. But we're gonna go ahead and get into this one a little bit. So I'm gonna pour this one and give you a little bit of history about Pinhook. So Pinhook, the whole term about it, first and foremost, pinhooking, if you will, is a, a, a term for raising thoroughbred horses, hence the picture on the front of the bottle, right? Um, raising thoroughbred horses, then obviously then they end up being sold off and so forth. So you always see the beautiful picture of horses on the front. Uh, it always gives you the horse size. So this one is 15.3 hands. Um, tells you the color, the sex. Uh, this crop, which means this, uh, this one was uh, actually bottled in 2018. And then um, from a proof standpoint, this is 115.3. There's the, the bottle, 115.3. So interesting story about Penhook as a company. So a couple of things. First and foremost, they do not actually make their own bourbon. They work with a company called Castle & Key. Um, Castle & Key Distillery is the one who actually, they distill it, they, uh, they bottle it, I'm sorry, distill it, they age it, they barrel it, uh, and then they bottle it, right? So they do the entire process, right? From start to finish. Where Pinhook comes in is Pinhook actually works very closely with them. They have Pinhook as a master taster and the master taster works very well, obviously with the master distiller before it's, everything's kind of blended and so forth. And then that individual has a final say so in terms of what's blended together, what's bottled and so forth. So that's the whole kind of partnership between Castle and Key and Pinhook. But the last cool thing about Castle and Key, Pinhook's partner, is that Castle and Key started back in 2014. So it started five years ago and they actually bought the land from the old E.H. Teller Distillery. So Colonel Teller Jr., right? Everyone knows E.H. Teller from the, the product that we buy this day and age, right? This guy here, E.H. Teller. Um, but I will say, when he had his own distillery, which started back in the late 1800s, was open for a while with Prohibition, went out of business. So Castle and Key bought that land. No joint, nothing similar with Buffalo Trace. I don't want to get anyone twisted or uh, or confused. E.H. Teller is now produced by Buffalo Trace, completely separate product, separate ingredients and so forth. So this is different, right? Um, but it's pretty cool that they started out by buying the old ruins of E.H. Teller's land. I think that's pretty cool. Cool story, at least for me. So this one here, Pinhook. This doesn't technically give an age statement, but we know Castle and Key started in 2014. Um, this one came out in 2018, so obviously it's aged four years. Okay, um, although on the bottle it says aged like I think three years or greater than three years, but this is aged four years. So let's go ahead and get into the nose, folks. Let's kind of get into the nose and the color. Beautiful color, very nice, all right? For a four year casting bourbon, nice color, not bad. From a nose standpoint, Hmm, it's very interesting. This one's, uh, wow. I don't always smell a very sweet maple syrup, almost like a like a brown sugar smell. A lot of times you pick up the caramel, vanilla. I don't get any of that, actually. No caramel, no vanilla. I get a lot of maple syrup, like brown sugar, some oak. All right, interesting. Okay, not bad. Let's go ahead and get into the tasting. Let's see how this one tastes. All right. A little bit of a burn going down, right? One was 115, yeah, 115 proof. A little bit of a burn going down. 
what's unique about it, that maple syrup, that, that sweetness, it definitely does transfer from the nose down through the palate. It transfers all the way through. Very sweet of a, of a casting bourbon. This is unique. Let me get a little bit more before I give a little judgment here. Wow, this one's so funny how it's, uh, you smell that maple syrup. It's, it's interesting with that brown sugar. All right. So I get a little oak. I get a little bit of alcohol as well, right? It kind of go, the burns going down a little bit. So this one, you feel it going down a little bit. Not horrible, but you feel it, right? And I'm a cast strength guy, I'll tell you that. But you do feel this one kind of going down. So this one, you know, it's eight, four years. You say, you know, bourbon judge. Is this one worth buying? Is it worth leaving on the shelf? I've seen it out. What's the judgment? The judgment is in. As you can tell, that was a light, light tap, right? This one's good. This is a buy. I'm gonna tell you it's a buy, but it's not like a overwhelming, like run out and grab 15 bottles of it. For me, I bought it because it's a casting bourbon that I could find for $45. That's hard to find, honestly, this day and age, right? So for $45, I definitely do think it's worth it. It's a good bourbon to sip, you know, on a, on a nice, you know, cold night as it is uh, today, right? It's worth sipping. Um, it's good. It's, uh, it, to me, it, the reason why I give it a light tap and it's a decent judgment of a, it's a buy, but not an overwhelming buy, is because honestly, it kind of lacks a little bit of a profile, right? So it's aged four years, right? It's a new distillery, new bourbon company, aged four years for this one here. It's good. Um, it's a little bit on the sweeter side, right, than I'm normally used to, which is okay. So if you love like a very sweet bourbon, then you would love this. Um, but for me, it, it just kind of lacks a little bit of the profile that I'm normally used to, like a very well-rounded bourbon as a whole. So again, I think it's good. I think it's worth maybe trying if you're out at a local bar and so forth. And if you like it, feel free to go ahead and buy it. But you really honestly can't go wrong because again, it's only $45. So. Folks, as always, thank you very much for, for watching today's video. Um, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll say it one more time. Happy holidays. Talk to you guys soon. See ya.